I said, you know what? I don't know the mind of God, but I don't think God will come back on a Sunday morning. I think he'll wait the Sunday evening to come back. <laughs> Amen. It's so good to see those of you that have come back out on this evening. And as always, we're mindful and grateful of the fact for those of you that are watching us online. Um, and we're cognizant of the fact that we have a lot of people from all over that are watching us. And we just pray that as always that you will follow along with us as we go through the word of God. Prayerfully, it can be a blessing to your life and want to encourage you that if you ever have any questions, any concerns about anything that is said, feel free to reach out to us. And I believe if you have a Bible question that we'll give you a Bible answer. Amen. So we we'll, we'll want to extend that to you. So um, don't feel like you have to go without knowing. You can ask somebody in there and we'll get you the answer that you need. Amen. Amen. Well, um, on this afternoon, I was just thinking about a song and I think y'all know it. So I need y'all to help me out with it. That's all right. All right. Uh, we sing it kind of, but we sing it in correlation with another song. But I just want to sing it the old way that we used to sing it. All right. Is that? We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldier of the cross, do you think I make a soldier? Do you think I make a soldier? Do you think I make a soldier? Soldier of the cross, yes, I think I make a soldier, yes, I think I make a soldier, yes, I think I make a soldier. Soldier of the cross, and every round go higher and higher, every round go higher and higher, every round go higher and higher. Soldier of the cross, and we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldier of the cross. Amen. Amen. Y'all sounded good. Amen. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Look, you was a little kid last time you heard it. <laughs> Amen. That's Alabama. That's how we do it back home. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We'll be this afternoon in Romans chapter 12. Um, verses 1 and verse number 2 here on this afternoon. And I believe this is something important for us to visit and something important for us to discuss because we need to be mindful of the fact um, that there's a certain thing called spiritual maturity. And that each of us as God's children should not remain at the same level in our faith for the majority of our life. But that we ought to always be growing in the wisdom and in the knowledge of God and wanting to become more and more like Jesus. Amen. So Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I just want if I could give for if I could give a topic for this afternoon, it would be it, it's time for God's children to grow up. 
it's time for God's children to grow up. Now, church, whenever we become Christians, when we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are to begin a transformation in our life. As I stated on this morning, there is no way, shape, form, or fashion for you to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, have an experience with Jesus, and your life remain the same after that. That is why Paul encouraged them, and do not be conformed to this world. In other words, don't let this world have an effect on you, but rather instead you have an effect on the world that you live in. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, that acceptable, that perfect will of God. But all of y'all can attest to the fact that preacher, transformation like that does not happen overnight. Transformation like this is not something you can buy on aisle 10 in Walmart, put it in the microwave, and it just pop up like that. It does not happen overnight. This does not set well with the society that we live in today because y'all know we want everything right now. You know, my name Jimmy. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give we want it, we want it right now. And we've been trained in a way to have instant gratification. I want it when I want it. And all you gotta do is if you flip on the channels late at night and you watch all of those commercials and those infomercials. They'll hire somebody that has worked for years developing physique and trying to sell you some kind of uh, equipment, you know, or something like that. Uh, simply trying to get their products sold. And another example like this, we all go to fast food restaurants. I'm sure some of us went to some after this morning. And you can go through the drive through and have your food within five to ten minutes. Guess what? And you didn't even have to put a pot on the stove. Instant gratification. However, we cannot have that kind of instant gratification kind of mindset when it comes to our walk with God and when it comes to our faith. What do I find there? First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1 through 3, he said, Therefore, laying aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy, envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if you indeed have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now, Peter calls new Christians babes. I think everybody in here can understand that concept because when a baby is born, that baby has no way to take care of itself. That baby depends upon the mother and the father to take care of it. And then as time goes by, the baby begins to learn new things. For an instant, they'll learn to crawl. Then they'll learn to walk. After a while, they'll learn to run. They'll also move from just drinking milk to having some kind of substance and some food. And that same concept is true with new Christians. We must grow in spiritual maturity one day at a time. And it ain't no shortcuts in this thing. Church, we got to take it one day at a time. And being a Christian is not just a Sunday morning and a Wednesday night thing, but this is a lifetime commitment. And every child of God, no matter how old you are, should be striving to grow more in Jesus Christ. We all, you are in a bad position if you ever get to the place where you say, I've grown all that I can grow. I know all that I need to know and I have all that I need to have. You're in a bad place when you think like that. So, but he tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, but rather grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's his desire for us. God wants us to know, know him. As Paul said, I, my desire is that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Now, if we look at a child, if we have something that is going on with us, maybe if we were not growing as we should or we had a child or something that was not growing as it should, you would go out and seek all kind of medical help that you can to try to get that child the help that they need so that they can grow. Well, if we'll do that in the same manner, we should be concerned with Christians who don't grow spiritually. Because then he tell us that the strong are the bad, the infirmities of those that are weak. So we as brothers and sisters have a duty to our other brothers and sisters. And if we see somebody that is weak or struggling, it's our duty not to put them down, but it's our duty to help them get up and to be where they're supposed to be. So I believe the Hebrew writer ran across some people like this. When he said in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 through 14, he said, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, 
You need someone to teach you the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is, here his word is again, a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, not just older people, but that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern those things that are good as well as those things that are evil. So you see, there's a great need for us as Christians to grow and to mature in God's word so that we can be pleasing to God, number one. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 17, he says, we know it. He said, therefore, take up part of the armor. Take up the full or the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the white in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded about your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith with which it will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now that I pointed out how important it is for us to grow, I just want to look at several, uh, three areas, and I'll let you go, that we can grow in God's, in God's knowledge and in the way that God will have us to do. I'm reminded of what Ezra said in Ezra chapter 7 and verse number 10. He said, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. Now notice, didn't just, just pop up on Ezra one day. It didn't just happen like that, but the Bible said that Ezra had prepared his heart. He had made himself ready to be able to share the word of the Lord. So number one, what do we have to do like Ezra did? We got to prepare ourselves. Preparing your heart, church, is one of the most important steps to being mature in Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, the desire or the right mindset to do God's will then you are going to fail and you're going to fall away from God. You see, it takes dedication and it takes commitment to learn more about God and to learn more about God's will. How do I say that it takes commitment? It takes commitment for you to be able to squeeze 10 to 15 minutes out of your day to read the Bible. How do I say that takes commitment? Because as soon as you come in the house and you say, well, I'm going to go ahead and study my word, as soon as you walk in, your telephone rings. Not only as soon as you're walking in your television ring, but you left the TV on when you left the house and now your show on and you didn't see it last week and now you want to sit there and watch it. Or, 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 or somebody, a neighbor, they out in the yard and you out there telling, oh, your grass just looking so good. What you doing with that yard? I need to get mine like that. We got every little thing going on and let me tell you, church, it ain't by accident. It is not by an accident, church. The devil throws those things out there so that he can get your mind off of what it is that God wants you to do so you won't take time out to study the word of God so that when you find yourself facing spiritual warfare, you are not strong enough to face the stuff that you face because we have not studied the word of God like we ought to be studying his word. The gospel writer in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. And here it is, with all of your mind. You got to love him, church, with all of your mind. You got to prepare to give all of yourself to God. The proverbial writer says in Proverbs 23 and 7, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He also says in Proverbs 4 and 23, he said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Church, that's why we got to keep our mind. And you know, and I'm sure you've heard it a million times in your life that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. That is, that is something, if ain't nothing ever been more true. That is so true. You got to keep your mind thinking on positive things, having positive thoughts in your mind. Why? Because if you don't, that gives the devil room to come in and plant all of these little things in your mind to have your faith veering and your faith wavering in Jesus Christ. We got to stand on the word of God. So 
Whatever you harbor in your heart is what's going to guard your life. Yeah. That's why, that's why, and, and, and we, I'm sure you, we say it all the time, like David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Why do I need a clean heart? Because we harbor things in our heart. Yeah. You know, there are people that say they've let stuff go, but they ain't really let stuff go in their heart. You know that there are people that say that they have forgiven people, but they haven't forgiven them in their heart. We harbor different emotions and different feelings in our heart. And, 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 you can, and, and that is because each and every single one of us at the end of the day, even though we are children of God, we have a fleshly side of us. And we have those thoughts and we have those desires and things like that. That's why we got to keep our heart and our mind focused on Jesus Christ so that we won't let that stuff trip us and throw us all kinds of... Because if we're not careful, if we don't study our word and we don't get in the Bible... And you'll be out at the grocery store or going in a store or something like that. And there'll be somebody that come up, uh, up to you. Hey, are you ready for Jehovah's return? Because if you don't study your word, there'll be some brother out there on the corner with a bow tie and a bean pie and a newspaper trying to come up. And if you are not careful, that's why church, we got to be my, we got to know what's going on around us. And we got to be mindful about these things. Y'all know it's just about a new religion popping up every day. Just about every day. It's a new wave. It's a new, I call it a new wave that's coming through. It's a new wave that's happening. And if we're not careful, and if we don't know the word of God, you'll get in conversations with people, and you'll be trying to convert somebody and end up getting converted. Yourself. You'll come back with, well, they told me this, and well, it was in there, and I, I just don't understand. That's why you got to stand on God's word, and you got to, we, we've gotten away from what we need to be in, because if we were who God called us to be, we'd be like those Christians of the first century. Well, the Bible said they didn't just wait to hear what the apostles said and the disciples were saying. But the Bible said that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the scriptures on Sunday. They searched the scriptures daily to see whether or not those things were so. And let me tell you, as you said earlier, we got to make our call in election sure, church. And you got to be sure at the end of the day, do I really have faith in my faith? Do I really have belief in what I believe in? Or am I just here? We got to be ready, church, to share our conviction. The, um, the writer says, and said, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, here it is, bringing every thought into captivity under Christ. Now, if you don't fully prepare, we're still talking about preparation. If you don't fully prepare your heart to serve God, you ain't going to be faithful. If we do not fully prepare our heart to serve God, we can learn about four, about four different types of hearts in the parable of the four souls that we read about. In Luke chapter 8 and verse number 4, he says that when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A soul went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away. Why? Because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and some sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop of a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried out, He who has an ear, let him hear. He that has an ear, church, let him hear. And let me tell you, church, when we preach the gospel, when we, when we preach the word of God, let me tell you, it falls on all kinds of hearts. It falls on all kinds of minds. And the reason that some people can get baptized on the first Sunday and not show back up the second Sunday is because they have not prepared their mind to serve God. They have not prepared their heart to be faithful to God. 
Because if you prepare yourself, you will make room, man. I, I, I know that y'all, I know y'all gonna be going over here, but I cannot go because service starts at such and such a time, and I'm not gonna be able to make it. We got we gotta, as I said, we gotta start planning our other activities around the work of God. We got to start planning our lives and what we are going to do around the church because it seems like post-pandemic, we got a different mindset. It seems like now that everything has happened that we feel like God had told us to sit down and to put down our sword and to put down our shield. But the same church that we were before the pandemic, we ought to be now and we ought to still be in the business of what? Saving souls and making sure that these souls remain in Jesus Christ. What kind of heart do you have this afternoon? Are, are, are you stubborn like the wayside soul? And don't really allow the word of God to say, you'll hear a sermon, oh, that ain't for me. You ever heard somebody, oh, he showed priest to y'all this morning. <laughs> <laughs> or are you like the rocky soul? What do I mean by rocky soul? You were once excited about the word of God. But you lack commitment and now you're just withering away. Or maybe you're like the thorny soul and your heart is only kind of prepared for God, but you allow the world to choke God's word in your life. Church, in order to be pleasing to God and to grow spiritually in Jesus Christ, you got to have a heart like fertile soul that is fully prepared for God so that you can grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Number two, we got to seek the law of the Lord. We got to seek the law of the Lord. In order to grow in anything, whether that's the word of God, whether it's a new job, whether it's a hobby, you got to seek out information and study it so that you can become more knowledgeable. Doc, I'm sure with every new drug or something that comes along, there's some paperwork or something that you got to look at and you got to study to see what all of this stuff is all about. If we are ever going to know more about God, we got to pick up his word, church. And let me tell you, sometimes it ain't good to, to look at his word on here. Sometimes we got to go the old-fashioned way and pick up. Uh, you got to pick up the written word of God. Why? Because, look, look, I can be up here reading the word of God. I got a Facebook notification. I, I can be up here reading the word of God. And, and here comes somebody on Snapchat or Instagram. Uh, or some, I got an email that to pop up and now I want to read it. We got to beware of all of the very, and let me tell you, it don't take but a little bit of distraction to get you off course. So we got to be mindful, and even in our preparation, if I'm going to study the Word of God, you know, if I'm turning my phone off, I don't need to be reading the Word on that, because guess what? A distraction may come from it. So this is, again, making sure that I have time when it's not me, God, and the notifications, but it's just me and God. So we got to seek the law of the Lord. The psalmist says in Psalms 119 and 10, he said, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. David, even though he fell short of God's will from time to time, overall, he loved God so much, church, that he tried his best to seek out God's commands. And it even says that he had it hidden in his heart. That's why God was able to say that David was a man after God's own heart. And we ought to be the same way. Seek his word in the morning. Seek his word in the evening, in the afternoon. Seek the word of God. He, the psalmist also said in that same chapter, in verse 127, he said, Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, more than fine gold. God's word, church, is, more, is, is worth more than gold. It's more precious than gold. How can I say that? Because this is what's going to determine whether or not you make it into everlasting life. There is nothing else in this earth that is more valuable than the word of God. How can I say that? Because it is the only thing that is able to lead us to eternal life in Jesus Christ. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Don't lay up for yourselves treasures in earth where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth nor dust doth corrupt nor thieves break through and steal. Here it is. For where your treasure is, Come on. Come on. there will your heart be also. So if my treasures are down here, my heart is going to be down here. But see ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, church. And all these things, he says, they'll be added unto you. Again, there are no shortcuts to studying God's word. We got to take time to actually get down in it and study. And let me tell you, studying is not just reading and just going through it and flipping and trying to see how far you can get. Studying is actually saying, you know what, I'm going to go to Genesis 1. I'm going to get me out of concordance. I'm going to go and I'm going to get some dictionary because guess what? There are some words that are going to come up that I may not understand. And while I'm doing this, I got my notepad down. And when I write those words down, I'm putting out the creator. You know how to study. When you were in school, you couldn't just read that stuff. You had to take notes. You had to write stuff down. You might do sticky notes or whatever it is. You got to actually study the word of God because a lot of people know what it say, but don't really know what it say. And that's how you can get people that can read the same Bible and come up with all kinds of different conclusions. Because people read, but they don't know what it is that they are reading. They lack understanding of God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15, be diligent to present yourselves approved unto God. A worker who need not to be ashamed, but what? Rightly dividing the word of truth. I can't, I can't by a long stretch understand how people can get behind a sacred desk and open their mouth and say things, but they are not rightly dividing the word of God. There are so many people, church, leading folk down what they call a rabbit hole. Leading people down astray. And let me tell you, people won't know any better because so many people are not willing to pick up the word and study for they said, well, the pastor said, my bishop said, my apostle said, well, they said this and they said that. What does God say? That's what we need to be concerned about. Not what no, no man that put his pants on one leg at a time, just like you got to say. But what does God have to say? Because what God has to say is what's going to judge us in the last day. And then thirdly, you got to do the commandments of the Lord. You got you to do his commandments, church. It's not enough to just know the word of God. You got to obey what you have learned. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. It's just information that you got stockpiled in your file cabinet. Unless you are applying it to your life. We got the church. James, James puts it like this in James chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to what? Save your soul. Be, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a, a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observed himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Now, if you really want to become mature, you got to learn to practice what it is that you study. What good is it going to do for us to do all of this, going the extra mile to study the word, if we don't then in turn apply it to our own life to see the how we can grow? Because guess what? If any of us put ourselves up next to the word of God, we're going to be coming short. If any of us look at this thing talking about, if any of us look in the mirror at our true selves matched up to the word of God, you're going to find faults from what somebody they say from the rooter to the tutor. You're going to find faults. You're going to find faults and you are going to find flaws. But the blessed thing is in actually being able to acknowledge and identify where those weak parts are in your life. So now you got the word of God that is able to help you to grow in those different areas of your life. 
We got to practice it, church. James tells us that if, if you're just a doer of the word, you ain't deceiving nobody but yourself. James said, you may be getting by right now, but guess what? God knows. God knows those that are just hearers. And he knows those that hear and do his word. Luke 6 and 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the things which I say? The word of God tells us many times, church, in one way or another, that if we love God, you're going to obey his commandments. You're going to do it. If you love God, guess what? You're going to be faithful. If you love God, you're going to be present. If you really love God, if you are really invested in this thing, it's going to show in your actions. As I, as I say, you know what? Every tree looks like a tree until some fruit come out. What kind of fruit are we bearing on this afternoon, church? Because Jesus says that you will know them by the fruit that they bear. What kind of fruit are we bearing? All of us look like a pretty shiny tree on Sunday morning. But what the tree look like on Monday? What the tree look like on Tuesday? You know, we dress it back up on Wednesday for Bible study. But what it look like on Thursday? What it look like on Friday, church? Make sure, hey, look, at, at top flight, make sure. <laughs> make sure. Make sure, church, that the example that we are trying to set is not something that we keep for special occasions. But rather, the example that we are trying to set is something that we are going to live out every single day of our lives. And again, that's not just going to happen. It's something that we're going to have to make intentions for. Something, as, the, as Ezra said, he prepared his mind for. We got to prepare ourselves, church. We got to get ourselves ready. Some of us, we're going to have to stop like me, waiting the Sunday morning to find out what we're going to wear. If, if, look, if, if I slip up, it's being late. Guess what? Maybe on Saturday night, I need to figure out what I'm going to wear. I already have it laid out. I already have it ironed and everything. So guess what? I ain't got no excuse. I'll be ready. Maybe I need to go ahead and make sure. I know the thing going to eat. Maybe I need to go ahead and get some gas right now so I won't be going around trying to find no gas in the morning so that I can be at church on time. Guess what? We got to prepare ourselves because we got so many little things that are going on that cause us to stumble and keep us from, from being those Christians that God desires for us to be church. But if we obey the commandments of God and if we follow them, Jesus said, and lastly, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, he said, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Church, guess what? It does us no good to come here and to hear what we hear and to participate in the worship services if we are not going to take that with us. It don't do us no good. Jesus said, you know what? Ain't, ain't gonna, that's what? You don't just have the cross for decoration. You ought to take up your cross and follow after Jesus. You remember when Jesus had told his followers a hard saying? And the Bible says that there were many that were with him at that time that turned away and, and never came with him again. Guess what? Guess what? They, they, get, they was there for the fish fry, but they didn't want to stick around for this. Jesus saw, and said there were many that were with him that turned away and did fall. And guess what? Jesus turned around to the west and said, y'all going to go too? <laughs> and, uh, he, said, he said, will you also go? And they said, look, where we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And guess what? He still has the words of eternal life, church. And I'm glad that he thought enough of us to give us words that we ought to follow, that we can guide ourselves by. I know man wrote it, but man didn't know what they were writing. God inspired them to write what it is that they were written. And that's, a, that's another argument that's coming up now. People saying, well, oh, that was written by men. They put that thing together. That ain't had nothing to do with God. Uh, well, well, we didn't know nothing about the Bible when we came over here from Africa. Well, the, the gospel was in Africa before you was in Africa. So how can that be. Where do you think the Ethiopian eunuch was on their way to? And after that experience that they had, do you think they just left that thing on the chariot out there in the desert? No, they took the word with them. They took it with them, church. But people come up with all kinds of stuff. 
trying to discredit God. Trying to discredit the knowledge of God. Oh, but then when they get in trouble, Lord, help me. If there is a God up there, I want you to come. Now, ain't no if. Do you believe or not? We can't straddle the fence with this thing. And then we got to be careful because there are a lot of people that have faith. They are children of God, but we listen to some of everything. And you're not careful. Listen to all this kind of stuff. You'll get confused. And you'll find yourself questioning your faith. Questioning whether or not, hey, is this thing really, is this really what it is? That's why you got to be careful, church. Everybody got something to say, but it ain't something that you need to listen to. And that's why, and that's, I, I've had conversations with people, you know, over, throughout this pandemic that, you know, most people that, you know, didn't have stuff that they can watch online, now that they're watching online, and people been watching this stuff, and now they, well, well, they doing it like this, and, and is that how it's supposed to be done, and are we supposed to do it like this, and are we supposed to be, that's why we got to stay in the word, church, and search the scriptures to see whether or not these things are so. Stay in your word. So that you won't get tripped up. So that you won't be tossed about like the Bible says by every wind of doctrine that comes your way. When Peter Popoff come on your television at 1 o'clock in the morning, turn him off. That miracle spring water is the same water coming out your faucet. Don't you dare send him no $15.99 for no prayer cloth. You go in there in your closet and rip up one of them rags if you want a rag. Don't do that. Oh, uh, we sending Peter Pop off $50 so he can send us a prophecy. And the same prophecy that he sent you, he sent to a thousand other people. <laughs> and we believe this stuff. That man sending the same letter out. So you mean to tell me God finna do the same thing for everybody? He telling you the same thing for everybody. That same little printed out paper that you sent, that's the same thing for everybody else. And to think that we that there are people walking around here thinking, oh, he he's so a man is so powerful that they can pray over some water and you're gonna drink it and you're gonna be healed from cancer and, and diabetes. Oh, it's gonna leave your body. And then the folk go and the, the folk they gonna have the answer for God. Cause them folk get up there, come up there, hobbling along with they with they cane or whatever. They, they just start, oh, I'm out, you know, I'm better. Uh, I can run. I ain't ran in years. And we're just on the treadmill yesterday. And people believe this stuff. People out here going broke, sending them folk their money. Because they believe what they're saying. The Bible told us in these last days that men are going to heap unto themselves teachers. Every, folk don't want to hear the truth. People want to go out and find the best thing that fits them, and that's what they want. You know, it's like kind of like Burger King. I want to have it my way. But I don't really like what that say. I'm going to choose a different route. Church, at the end of the day, it ain't but one way. That God has provided for us and that God has given us whereby we must be saved, church. Whereby we must be saved. Ain't no such thing as you laying your hand on the television and receiving salvation. Ain't no such thing as you uh, repeating after the preacher and being saved. Ain't no such thing. But guess what? People believe this stuff. Why? Because they don't look at the word. I, I learned something. That a lot of people, I said like this, blindly follow what they grow up behind. As long as they know mom and daddy went to Mount Moriah number two, I'm going to Mount Moriah number two. Well, grandma was a deaconess. Guess what? I'm trying to be a deaconess. Well, this and that and this and that. But guess what? And um, I'm sure y'all have heard this saying, you know, how um, the lady, when she was making the ham, and, and, and she wondered why, you know, mama always used to cut the end off the ham. And, and she kept going around trying to figure out all that good ham they was wasting. Just think about that. All them good hams that they was wasting on them to figure out that the only reason her mama did that because the pan was too little. <laughs> the reason that 
she did that because the pan was too little. But guess what? They continued to do it because they thought that's how it was supposed to be done. Through generation, generation. That's how they were doing it. Because that's how Big Mama did it. And it was good. Big Mama could. When she got through with that thing, man, it was good. So I want mine to turn out like her, so guess what? I'm going to do it the same way that she did it. But guess what, church? When it comes to your soul, you need to be watchful. When it comes to your soul, I'm not trusting. Look, I love my mom, and I know, I know she's watching. Guess what? I ain't trusting her for my soul's salvation. Marissa, I love you, but guess what? When it comes to me and Jesus, hey, 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 you know what? When it comes to that church, you got to make sure. You got to make, as he said, your calling and your election share. And when you stand before God, you can't say, well, Peter Popoff tricked me. <laughs> when you stand before God, well, when Brother Billy Graham, he told me to repeat after him and receive the Lord in my heart. And I was saved. And I've been saved ever since then. And Bishop Jakes told me all I had to do was this. And I'm there. And I send them my money every week. And I've been doing this only to stand before God and say, I don't even know who you are. I never knew you. Cast into the lake that burning with fire and brimstone. We need to be careful. We need to be watchful. We need to be, as the Bible says, vigilant. We need to pay attention. Because what has happened, that stuff is not just going on outside. It's on the inside now. There are churches of Christ now that tell you that all you got to do is receive God in your heart and you'll be saved. They're telling all kinds of things. Well, you know, now there are churches, even in Tennessee now, where they got half of the elders of women and half of them are men. All of this stuff going on. And folks say, well, you know what? We've been having a deep study for the past six months and you know, after this study, we just decided that this is the way that God wants us to go. That ain't the truth. How do I know that the truth? Because God's word ain't changed. His word is going to be the same yesterday, today, and it's going to be the same even forevermore. If anything changed, we are the ones that changed it, not God. And guess what? He told us in his word, he said, don't add and don't take away. Preach the whole counsel of God. And guess what? We got to preach it in season when they want it and when they don't want it. Guess what? We got to preach the word of God and they tell you to get away. Guess what? You just shake the dust off your feet and keep on going. Go to the next place and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that, again, is what's going to judge us in the last day. God, God is good, church. And I'm so glad and I'm so thankful that he has given us his word. So that we don't have to stay on the bottle all of our life. But guess what? We can eat some steak after a while. Yeah. Look, we can have our flows for late. Uh, and you know, we can, we can have it at some point in our life once we grow up in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we got to be careful even in our evangelism. If you still obey, don't be trying to evangelize to nobody. All right, now. If you still obey in, in the knowledge of God, don't you be going out there trying to convert nobody. Because we'll be coming out there trying to get you to come back. <laughs> Make sure and be careful. Even if you converse with somebody, if you don't know the answer, ain't nothing wrong with calling somebody. If you don't know the answer, ain't nothing wrong with saying, hey, you know what? I can't give you an answer right now, but let me get with somebody and I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you that answer. That's our duty, church. To share the gospel, the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ in its simplicity and in its truth. And I'm glad that he's given us that so that we can know how we ought to live. What we can do to make it in heaven. And what we can do to live, not just live after life, but to live while we're here. He's given us that and I'm so thankful. If you're here um, on this afternoon, for those of you that are already Christians, um, and you're standing in the need of prayer, um, you have that opportunity to request prayer here on this evening. Maybe you're watching us, and you're standing in the need of prayer. Comment, message us, um, let us know the prayer request that you have, and we'll be glad um, to have the opportunity to pray for you. For truly, the prayers of the righteous, they availeth much. If you're here 
And maybe you're watching us at this time and you don't know the Lord as your savior in the pardon of your sins. At this time, you are not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. We extend unto you the savior's invitation. Come out hearing his word, believe in what it is that you've heard, repent of your sins, confess Christ as your savior and be buried with him in baptism. And you'll rise up as the Bible says, as a new creature in Jesus Christ, all things passed away. Behold, all things shall become new. That is the extent, the invitation has been extended. If you're subject to the invitation, don't put off today for what you got intentions on doing. You have that opportunity now. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Just as I am without.